important. It's important as a journalist to be able to step back from your own personal preferences and judge people fairly. And that is what I trust we will try to do in this election cycle. Brett Hume has always been dedicated to that one word that's meant to be the cornerstone of journalism, truth. He looks for what he believes are the facts and presents them how he sees them as honestly as he can. Truth is also a key part of Brit's Christian faith. He'll defend it honestly off and on air. That's in part because it helped him survive one of the most difficult periods of his life. He went through something that no one should ever have to go through, but it brought him closer to God. Keep watching as Brit Hume opens up about the tragic death of his son. Brit's career. Brit Hume was born June 22, 1943. He graduated from the University of Virginia in 1965 with a degree in English. He didn't immediately have a drive to pursue a degree in journalism. He stumbled into it because he needed a job. I had no inkling that I was going to be a journalist. Um, no idea what I wanted to do. And then I had a very great blessing occurred which was, I was out of college, I was married. Uh, by the fall of that year, uh, the, I graduated in 1965, by the fall of that year, we had a child on the way, and I had to find work. And I didn't really know what to do. I had majored in English, which was turned out to be a complete waste of time for the profession I ultimately chose, so I tried to get a job teaching English, and that didn't work. And I went to an employment agency in, in Hartford, Connecticut, where I was then living because my wife's family was from up there and they had room and we were living with my wife's mother. And they found me a job as a cub reporter on the old Hartford Times, which I snapped up because I had to have work. But when I got into that newsroom that first day and sensed the atmosphere, I knew I was home. It was this clattering place with this irreverent spirit and something happening all the time and it was in those days there were no computers you had the old battered typewriters being pounded on and you had a guy at the copy desk his name was Bill Shea and if his name hadn't been Bill Shea we would have had to change his name to Bill Shea because this guy was Bill Shea ruddy white hair deep stentorian voice cigarettes uh, uh, coarse voice yelling copy out across the newsroom the copy was being sent in pneumatic tube to the composing room which was above us it was wonderful. It was the lively atmosphere of the Hartford Times newsroom that made him fall in love with the profession. He thought it was the coolest place he'd ever been and says, quote, I loved it from that first day and I've never really been anything but a reporter or now a commentator. Britt then moved on to the United Press International and the Baltimore Evening Sun. He worked for columnist Jack Anderson from 1970 to 72. His first book, Death and the Mines, Rebellion and Murder in the United Mine Workers, was published in 1971. His story about the international telephone and telegraph being cleared of antitrust violations in exchange for contributions to the 1972 Republican National Convention earned him national attention. It was enough to have his family briefly put under surveillance. He became the editor of Moore magazine in 73 and published his second book, Inside Story, in 74. Britt later got a job at ABC News in 1973 he became a correspondent in 76 and covered the House of Representatives and the Senate for 11 years. He reported on Walter Mondale's 1984 campaign and George H.W. Bush's 1988 campaign. He was even the chief White House correspondent from 1989 to 96. Britt left ABC for the Fox News Network in 1996. He began Special Report with Britt Hume in January of 98. The show gained interest due to events such as the Monica Lewinsky scandal and the 2000 election. It became the number one cable news program in the 6 p.m. Eastern slot for several years. Britt announced his retirement from that show in July 2008 and announced Brett Baer as his replacement. He aired the final episode on December 23, 2008, saying... I will not be back here tomorrow night at 7, but I hope you will, as Brett Baer and Megyn Kelly will be anchoring our election night coverage starting from 6 o'clock on. And starting tomorrow, I'm back to my former role as the Fox News senior political analyst. I'm deeply grateful to all of you who stayed with us during this transition, and especially also to the staff of this broadcast who have been so patient and so kind. Britt became the anchor of On the Record on September 6, 2016, after its longtime anchor, Greta Van Susteren, abruptly left. His first episode drew 2.4 million viewers. He also joined other anchors to cover the 2020 election, including Chris Wallace, Juan Williams, Dana Perino, Brett Baer, and Martha McCallum. 
Britt's work made him a respected journalist. He ended up with a full awards shelf. He earned TV's first Academy Award nomination in 1979 for The Killing Ground. He got a Primetime Emmy in 1991 for his coverage of the Gulf War. He was also named the best in the business by the American Journalism Review for his coverage of the White House. Britt's controversial comments make more sense now. Britt has faced the same struggle every celebrity faces. Every comment he makes is put under scrutiny. He has said a few things on air that aren't remembered fondly by everyone. He spoke out against Tiger Woods' infidelity rumors, but not in the way fans expected. He hoped the golfer would find his way to Jesus. He's also openly discussed his opinions on abortion. He gave a very graphic depiction of why he believes it's morally wrong. He said, Some estimates are that as many as 55 million abortions, 55 million have occurred since the court acted. In that time, science has given us an ever clearer picture of just how much of a baby a fetus is. At 20 weeks, we now know these tiny creatures can hear, even recognize a mother's voice. Their toenails are growing and their hearts beat loud enough to be heard by a stethoscope. The moral case for allowing such beings to be killed grows ever weaker. If science is able to determine that a fetus at a certain age, a certain stage, feels pain, or feels pain from the, nearly at the beginning, that would change everything. I think the support for abortion and abortion rights and for its legality would crumble. And I think that the political atmosphere around this issue would, would change almost overnight. Statements make more sense today. It's no wonder he treasures life when he tragically lost someone close to him. His son's tragic death. Britt got a life-changing call on a Monday morning in February 1998. He got the news that his son, Alexander Britton Sandy Jr., had taken his own life. Sandy was a reporter for The Hill in Washington, D.C. He'd been charged with drinking while impaired the previous night. He returned home and shot himself after being released from prison. Britt said, quote, I was staggered by his loss. It's like something is amputated from you that is never going to be back. There's a sense of darkness that comes over you about life and the world. It's as if nighttime descends on your heart and you just have to get through it. Britt got an outpouring of sympathy when he returned to special report after Sandy's funeral. He remembers that, despite his address not being well known, his mailbox was always full of letters of condolences and prayers. He says, quote, I read every one of them. I wept over some of them. I smiled at some of them. I felt this powerful sense of gratitude about it. The National Press Club honors his son's memory every year. They established the Sandy Hume Memorial Award for Excellence in Political Journalism. How Brit's Faith Helped Him Through Brit's thoughts turned to God after his son's tragic death. It felt as if his Savior was with him in a way he hadn't felt before. He grew up in the faith. He attended chapel every morning at St. Albans and went to church with his family at St. Margaret's as a child. He continued to go to church as an adult. Britt said that before his son's death, he would have told people he was a Christian if he was asked. Looking back now, he realized he was only a Christian in name. It took overwhelming loss for him to feel God with him. He felt the Lord was the only one who could get him through his grief and pain. He got baptized and confirmed to the Episcopal Church and committed his life to Christ in a way that was very meaningful to him. He will likely never stop speaking about his faith on camera, but he's also found ways to work his faith into his work behind the scenes. He helped fellow broadcaster Fred Barnes come to Christ after giving him a copy of the book Jesus Rediscovered. Fred then introduced Britt to former football player and minister Jerry Leachman. They formed a journalist's Bible study group and home church together. His wife struggles. Brett met Kim when they were working at ABC News. They were married in 1993 before she retired as Fox News vice president in 2006. She had her own demons to overcome beyond the loss of her son. She grew up with alcoholic parents and began drinking at age 14. Kim's breaking point was at 26. She woke up too sick to go to work and was afraid she'd lose her job. She wasn't fired, but she was overcome with emotion and asked God to take her life. She sensed that God's answer was no, and it brought her new purpose. She surrendered fully to Christ and detoxed off alcohol. She also joined with Brit to deepen her faith. They spent a year reading through the Bible. It inspired her to start a faith-based blog. Now it's time to hear from you. Who's your favorite political commentator? Let us know in the comment section below.